Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black reenact the crime combo deck nicknamed Eldrazi Surprisey, as we're gonna try to cast both Ulamog and Emrakul, potentially in the same turn, all thanks to Omniscience being cheated onto the battlefield. That's our goal, cast this 10-man enchantment using reenact the crime, saying we can cast spells from our hand without paying their mana cost, which of course is an easy way to cast both Eldrazi in the same turn. Now how do we get there? We need to reenact the crime, the new 4 mana instant, exile's target non-land card in a graveyard that was put there from anywhere this turn, we copy it and we may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Important that we cast the copy and not simply get to put it on the battlefield, because that means we still get the cast trigger from Ulamog, allowing us to exile 2 permanents, and then Emrakul gets to take the opponent's next turn where we can mess with their hand and basically send all their creatures into our huge Eldrazi. So that's our game plan. Then another finisher we can maybe cast for free with Omniscience or cheat into play with Reenact the Crime is Magma Opus. Now this one's not quite as game-ending as some of our Eldrazi, but it does also fill a role of maybe a mana accelerant, as we can discard it for two mana to make a treasure token, and that's also a way to kind of enable Reenact the Crime if we're missing a different discard outlet. If we have five lands in play, we can discard Magma Opus, even in the opponent's upkeep, since we can do this all at instant speed, then we'll have an extra treasure, to help us cast Reenact the Crime, get back Magma Opus that we just put in the graveyard, and then we can even maybe tap down some of the opponent's lanes in addition to dealing damage, making a 4-4 token and drawing two cards, so that's also pretty sweet. Now of course we do need some other discard outlets to enable Reenact the Crime, since the plan is to combo off on turn 4, so we need our discard outlets to basically already be on the battlefield, so we can activate them without having to pay any additional mana, so then we can Reenact the Crime and immediately combo off. So at 2 mana there's Arona, as a creature it's more likely to get taken out, so it does have a few weaknesses, but it also has the advantage of maybe transforming into the Tolarian Obliterator later in the game, and whenever we cast a legendary spell we can untap Arona, and there's a few legends throughout to maybe let us loot multiple times in one turn. Then there's Collector's Vault at 2 mana, does require a 2 mana payment, but if we cast Collector's Vault on turn 2, turn 3 we can activate it making a treasure, and then at turn 4 we can activate it once again, and then with 2 treasures total we'll still be able to reenact the crime, so that's still good to go. And then we've got Kaito Shizuki, which lets us draw and discard. It will then also phase out, so the opponent can take it out. And then on turn 4, it will be back on the battlefield, where we can once again draw and discard and set up our combo. So there's not many ways for the opponent to interact with it. And then we've got the Great Door as well, which is just an artifact that can draw and discard. So we can play it, activate it on turn 3, and then once again activate it on turn 4. Now, what if we don't draw or reenact the crime, then our deck doesn't do anything? Well, actually, we still have Beseech the Mirror to help out. This 4-mana sorcery lets us search up any card in our deck, which is great if we already have an Omniscience on the battlefield, because then we can just search up our Eldrazi to close out the game. But Beseech also doubles up as another reenact the crime, basically, especially if we can bargain it, which will require us to sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as we cast it. Then we get to search our library for any card, and if that card has mana value 4 or less, so we get to cast it for free, so we can easily sacrifice the Collector's Vault itself, or maybe an extra treasure token we have laying around. We can also sacrifice the Great Door if needed after discarding our finisher, and then Kaito Shizuki can also make a Ninja token in a pinch. Now of course that will require us to first make the Ninja token the turn we play Kaito, and then on the following turn, on turn 4, we have to use the Draw Discard ability to put our finisher in the graveyard, so the opponent does get a turn to maybe take out our Ninja token to prevent us from bargaining, so of course we would much rather just draw the reenact the crime as opposed to beseech the mirror since there's more things that can go wrong but having the backup is still very nice and as we mentioned it's also very good once we get omniscience on the battlefield and then to round out the deck we also have four copies of thoughtseize giving us a little bit of early interaction this can take away counter spells or graveyard hate from the opponent and then we can also potentially use it as a discard outlet in a pinch if we have five mana we can thoughtseize ourselves to discard one of our eldrazi for instance, and then we can still reenact a crime to cast them for free, so that's also pretty nice. Could potentially replace Thoughtseize with Fatal Push, and that can also help out against those aggressive decks, but uh, I've been pretty happy with Thoughtseize so far. 
And uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up our main deck. Our mana base has lots of blue-black dual lands, since we need both triple blue for reenact and triple black for besiege, so can't afford to play too many basics or pathways even. So lots of blue-black dual lands instead, including the new Undercity Sewers, which lets us surveil when it enters. So if we're very lucky, this could also mill something expensive to then reenact back, but uh, that's not really part of our game plan, mostly playing this early on to sculpt our hand and find the finishers and discard out outlets in the first place. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and we've got Reenact the Crime but no discard outlet to set it up. So we have two or three draw steps here to try and find one of our 12 enablers. All right, I'll try it. Of course, a discard spell on Reenact could also mess up our sequencing. But we do get to start with a sewers to surveil, so that digs us a little bit deeper. Don't need Shipwreck Marsh. Opponent maybe on Blue Red Phoenix, and there's the Great Door. Alright, that's a great draw. Um, maybe still play Dark Slick Shores, in case we draw another one. Nah, no, I think I'll save myself the two damage. We only really need up to 4 mana, so I don't think the extra untapped land is going to matter. And there we see Ledger Shredder. Play the Great Door. Don't need to activate it this turn cycle, although we can maybe discard a land. If we draw Omniscient, that would definitely improve or reenact the crime. And then we gotta hope our opponent doesn't have spell peers, sometimes a one or two off in the Phoenix deck. So digging towards a backup reenact could also be necessary. Could also see them tap out to bring back an Arclight Phoenix by discarding it with a Ledger Shredder. Alright, opponent taps out for a second one, so the coast is clear. And sure, we'll activate the Great Door. Find another Ulamog. Probably won't need both of them. But probably won't need Sewers either. Alright, and another Emrakul, so we found all our Eldrazi. So one last chance to find Omniscience. Well, we actually hit it, wow. So now we get to cast double Ulamog. Double Emrakul if we want to. That's pretty ridiculous. A Ledger Shredder does get to connive, to be fair. So yeah, we can exile pretty much all of their permanents and then play an Emrakul. So we probably want to hit three lands and one Shredder and then the other Shredder is going to attack into Emrakul. Here's another one. And here's an Emrakul, because why not? Pass a turn. And let's see here. Anything we can do to mess up the opponent's turn? I guess play Mountain and cast Impulse on your own Ledger Shredder. Doesn't really matter, since it's going to attack into Emrakul. Okay, not bad. Pono gets to take their turn. And next turn we get to turn our Eldrazi sideways. Pono's looking through our graveyard, trying to figure out what just happened. Alright, and our opponent finally scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. What do we think of our opener? We're missing Besiege and Reenact the Crime. Do get to have a look with Thoughtseize, and then we've got a great door to try and find the missing combo pieces. So this one's borderline. We also don't have the Surveil Lane to help out. Take a mulligan. Alright, this one's better. Besiege can go. Although we could use Besiege to find a finisher, technically. I think we're more likely to draw into it naturally. 
and then a second reenact in case of a discard or counter spell. Now a very fast deck can uh, potentially beat us before we combo off, and Heroic is certainly capable. So next turn play the Great Door, and then we have a couple draw steps to find a finisher. We'll see if the Heroic deck can present lethal in the meantime. For now, Defined Strike. At least they didn't play the Virtuoso on turn 2, which is the most likely to lead to a turn 3 kill. And if they're scared of a Fatal Push, they might keep up a Protection spell. Okay, found Emrakul, that's a good one. So at the very least, we can cast Emrakul next turn. And I don't think a favored hoplite can deal 17 damage here. Arcanist is next. And a Monstrous Rage is plus 4 damage, basically. So we take 6. And a Rona. I guess we don't need the second reenact now. And found Omniscience, okay. So start by using the Great Door. Omniscience can go. And reenact it back. Can play another Great Door if we'd like. Just to maybe find some other finisher. Thoughtseize doesn't seem needed. Alright, I'll play Rona. Pass a turn, and then how can we mess up the opponent's turn the most? Can certainly attack into Emrakul, and then we can cast a bunch of these on opposing creatures as well. So let's say we Monstrous Rage on Rona. Let's use the Loron's Escape. Scry, do we want a Legionnaire? No, we don't, since we want to leave them without creatures. And then, God's Willing... Can name Black. And don't want a Swiss Spear. These two attack. Okay, maybe Scry once again to leave a bad card on top. And name green. Spikefield Hazard they can have. And then I'll line up some blocks. Okay. Pretty good turn. So our opponent's out of creatures. And yeah, we couldn't have given Rona a second monster roll. And Amarkul has protection from instance, so don't think we could have done much better. And then it's 5 mana to transform Rona next turn, which would present lethal. So we just need to draw into an untapped land and we'll be good to go. Our opponent can technically cycle Ancestral Anger targeting Rona, maybe find a chum blocker, but yeah, I don't see them surviving this. Opponent passes back, draw into a tap lane. See if we can do better. Seems like they have disconnected. That's what Emrakul does to people. If we don't find an untapped land, then we may as well leave Rona back on defense, just in case. But even with a hasty creature of the top, I don't see them dealing 11 damage or 10 damage if they hazard end of turn. Another reenact the crime doesn't do much for me. Okay, so we'll just hit for 13. I guess technically, if we kept reenact the crime, 
and put our opponent to one and they go for end of turn spike field hazard we can reenact to cast spike field hazard for one more damage but yeah opponent seems to have disconnected so i don't think it's gonna matter all right and our opponent explodes on to the next one okay we're on the draw and we've got most of the pieces we need just need to hit our land drops and then uh, yeah we could get an omniscience in play Still doesn't win us the game, we still need something to do afterwards, but uh, yeah, we do get a few draw steps. And then Thought Seize for interaction. On occasion you can also Thought Seize yourself if you need to enable reenact the crime, if you have an extra mana. Alright, this is going to be painful. Taking damage off our river, two more from Thought Seize, facing black green elves. So definitely want to end up taking company. For now we'll take Clan Caller since that increases their damage output. And they can already cast it next turn. Alright, land is good. I'll leave them with just Overgrown Tomb. And then since we have reenact a crime and not besiege, we can afford to just draw and discard instead of making a token, which could be useful to set a bargain. And then one omniscience can go here. Perfect, so we'll have the mana for reenact next turn. So yeah, feeling good about it, but there's still cards our opponent could have like the uh, three mana shaman of the pack. Okay, so activate Kaito. Now, what do we have here? I reenact the crime. Now we still only have one blocker against an opponent going wide. So we could still be dead here. Alright, never mind. Emrakul prompts a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And what do we think of this hand? We can technically combo on turn 4 if we hit our land drops using Kaito to make a token. And then sack it to bargain and then get reenact. But we also still need to find kind of a finisher. And we need to hit our land drops in the meantime. So, this hand's kind of mediocre. Now Rona does help. Can maybe discard a Thought Seize if we don't think we'll cast it in time. But yeah, needing to hit land drops and a finisher at the same time makes things a little trickier. I'll take a mulligan. Alright, this seems a little bit better. We're missing Reenact or Besiege. But we'll be in a better position to cast them once we do. And then I could keep Magma Opus as kind of a finisher in case we do find Reenact or Besiege. With our current mana I could also still curve Thoughtseize into Collector's Vault to slow down the opponent. So maybe that's still the play, just get rid of Magma Opus. And then between Kaito and Collector's Vault we have a lot of redraws to maybe find something more exciting. Yeah, close call. Well, let's see what we're working with. Opponent on a blue-red phoenix deck. And then don't care about the spot removal here since it doesn't damage planeswalkers. Consider can go since that actually puts a card in the graveyard. So yeah, not the most uh, terrifying hand to see. But with all the cantrips out of the phoenix deck they can quickly change the contents of their hands. A treasure cruise could eventually refuel them. And if we draw a Besiege as opposed to Reenact the Crime, they will have removal for my token. Although we still have Collector's Vault as a discard outlet, so I can maybe make a token and then immediately sacrifice it. Okay, so play Kaito. Can draw and discard. Alright, never mind. Opponent with a Jory Disruption here. All 
All right, picked up a reenact the crime, so won't be able to combo off this turn. But uh, I guess it doesn't hurt to activate Vault right now. Find the Great Door. If I keep both lands, we get a treasure. Next turn, five lands in play, two treasures. We can activate and then reenact, but we don't need to keep a land for that to work. So I think I'll keep the Great Door. And we could cast it now, but it's not going to do much when we can't activate it. So I'll keep my treasure. So we'll start with a Collector's Vault activation. And then see if we discard something awesome. And then we can already reenact for it. If not, we'll cast one of our three drops. Alright, don't need another Vault. Now maybe go for Kaito over the Great Door. Get rid of the land. Alright, so we get a few more attempts at it next turn. Opponent's still not doing a whole lot. Guess we'll have to watch out for Hall of the Storm Giants eventually. And another reenact. Start with Kaito. Find Omniscience, okay. So I can put an Omniscience in play, which can be bad for us. And then we'll still have another reenact in hand, just in case. The Great Door, we can almost transform as well. Just requires a bit more mana. Alright, opponent had the Spell Pierce. Alright, it's a setback. I didn't want to use Vault first in case I had another Jory Disruption, but we couldn't pay for Spell Pierce. So now we need to find another finisher. Not like Omniscience would have won us the game right now. And they actually have a Prismari command for Vault as well. So, yeah, lots of kind of one-offs that you don't always see in the Phoenix deck. Disruption, Spell Pierce, Prismari command. But they're being useful here. And Pieces of the Puzzle. Also a card that's fallen out of favor recently. Most decks preferring the uh, two-mana fairy. Okay, so Besiege gives us quite a few options. We can basically pick whatever we want to put in hand to then reenact next turn. Kaito can start by drawing and discarding once again. Find a land. I guess we don't need that. And then Besiege. What's the best we can do here? I guess Emrakul is pretty good, as it at least blocks the Arclight Phoenix as well if needed. Yeah, I think um, Emrakul is going to be our best bet. And then if they manage to take out Kaito, we still have the Great Door to enable Reenact, even if it's going to cost us another turn to set up. We're actually not too far away from hard casting Emrakul here. So I imagine they get back at least one Phoenix, but they might have a second one to finish off Kaito. Alright, just hard cast Phoenix. That's fine. So the coast is clear. Magma Opus is fun too, but I'll still take Emrakul. Okay, how can we mess up the opponent's turn? I could technically hold priority, cast all three burn spells on Arclight Phoenix, get back another Arclight Phoenix and send it into Emrakul. Could also, let's see, Hall is 6 mana, so yeah, that's not gonna work. So we need to go full control, cast Lightning Axe, discarding a card. Still in full control, cast Fiery Impulse. 
cast another fiery impulse, then let it resolve. Phoenix dies, Phoenix comes back, Phoenix dies, and our opponent's empty handed, although they still have all of the storm giants as a potential problem. And then next turn, we could even discard Magma Opus in the opponent's upkeep to then reenact at instant speed thanks to the extra treasure. And then we could even tap down all of the storm giants for what it's worth. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and, uh, well, I mean, it's not a great hand, but if we find our third land, so we can cast Great Door, maybe get rid of one Beseech, and then the second Beseech, with Bargain sacking an artifact, can put an Emrakul in play. Giganta could mean Arclight Phoenix, could mean Heroic. Heroic could be pretty fast, but, um, yeah, I'll try it. And I will start with the Thought Seize, even if it means taking a bit of damage. Can maybe slow down the opponents. If they're a heroic deck, they might only have one creature in hand. Alright, never mind, it's the Convoke deck. With double Gleeful Demolition, Thraben Inspector, Ornithopter, so this hand's pretty scary. Um, so I can't take away both Demolitions, I can't take away both Artifacts. So maybe we take the Loxodon at this point. Then the opponent can go turn one Ornithopter Demolition, turn two Inspector Demolition, have seven creatures in play. I mean, that's a pretty fast clock. If I take Ornithopter, then they're gonna go turn one Inspector, turn two Demolition, and then they can already Convoke a Loxodon. It's pretty bad either way, but I guess I'll take the Convoke payoff. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can outrace six goblin tokens in time. And Emrakul also doesn't help against a go-wide deck, since they can just swarm us. But if we don't draw third land, it doesn't matter, since we never stood a chance. Thalia, the pickup, wow. Don't think I've seen that one in the Convoke deck very often. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's about as good as it gets against our deck. We did draw the Reenact in the meantime, but now we need more lands before we can get the Great Door going. They can still go Inspector plus Demolition for two mana. So they're not quite attacking for lethal next turn. So if I draw an untapped land, I still have a chance to at least cast my Reenact the Crime. But I don't think we can realistically win unless maybe Magma Opus gets involved. But with Thalia, we still need to pay the tax to cast a free spell with Reenact. So yeah, we can cast a creature for free, but a non-creature is still going to get taxed. So I think that means we're out of potential outs. Did find the Omniscience. But uh, yeah, if I discard Omniscience, again, if we Reenact it back, should we find the untapped land? It's still going to cost me one mana because of Thalia. So I can't actually put the Omniscience on the battlefield. Otherwise I would have kept Omniscience and then double Besiege can get double Magma Opus and then we can kind of do something, but again, Thalia kind of prevents that from happening. And uh, yeah, if we don't draw an untapped land, it doesn't matter since we can't even reenact in the first place. Did get there, all right, so at least we get to have a little bit of fun I reenact back Emrakul. We're still very much dead, but uh, it's always fun to mess with the opponent's hand a little bit. Alright, Thalia, you've been a thorn in our side. You get to die now. And that'll do it. Yeah, I think without Thalia we actually stood a chance here with Omniscience and double Besiege. We could kind of go off and uh, 
multiple copies of Magma Opus can certainly deal with a bunch of tokens. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a deck with Kiruga, so most likely a Fires of Invention deck, which is not known for having lots of interaction on the stack, um, maybe a Leyline Binding. So this hand is just missing a Discard Outlet, and then Discard Omniscience, and we're off to the races. Uh, Besiege can also find it, although that will slow us down. Yeah, I'll try it. Double Pathway means we need one on blue, one on black to be able to cast our four drops. And we found Kaito, so that's perfect. Turn three Kaito, turn four Reenact. And just hope the opponent's tapped out by then. Could have a look with Thoughtseize, but then we can't uh, play Kaito this turn. Is it worth it to slow things down just in case her opponent has a counter spell? Although, yeah, with uh, Kiruga's companion, I don't think we're too worried. I could sneak right by, and for now, we can discard the sewers. And there's a Fires of Invention, so opponent won't be able to interact. And Enigmatic Incarnation does nothing, so yeah, we're good to go. Discard Omniscience. And our hands full of goodies. Maybe kick things off with uh, Thoughtseize. And they've got some good ones here as well. Uh, let's see, how can we mess up their turn next turn with Emrakul? We can already plan ahead since we don't have much time once we cast Emrakul. So with fires, I don't think Atraxa is going to be a factor. So I don't think this matters too much. Then cast Beseech, which can get Ulamog. Ulamog exiles two lanes. And then cast Emrakul. And then we can still cast Magma Opus in their upkeep. Although, I guess we probably want the lands available, since we're gonna take the extra turn with Emrakul first. And then, yeah, I mean, we can not cast a whole lot underneath Fires of Invention, but we can at the very least sacrifice it end of turn to the Enigmatic Incarnation, and then I think we can even decline to choose something to put in play, so we just get rid of it. Could have also kept Tunch the Spirit Realm for the channel ability. Let's see, Excellent Artifact or Creature, return it. So we could have flickered an Eldrazi, not that it does much. So it's always fun to think about, but in this case I don't think it matters since we can just kill them on the following turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we're missing both Besiege and Reenact the Crime. Although with a lot of token makers and artifacts, we're fine drawing Besiege to combo off. So yeah, not the best hand ever, but it's got potential. Facing Monorad Aggro. Not something we'd love to see when on the draw. But uh, at least we don't expect any real interaction. Another Kumano. So far, you can see this in standard as well. Possible we have to make a token with Kaito just to kind of get in the way. Because I don't know if we'll survive another two turns. Monstrous Rage, yep. So that's hitting us for eight. And next turn we're scheduled to take uh, at least seven damage. Did actually draw the Besiege. So the only way I possibly survive is by making a token with Kaito. No, then we still take seven. So yeah, we're pretty dead here. Not much we can do. I guess we can uh, see what we would have drawn. 
yeah, on the play, would it have made a huge difference? Maybe we get uh, that one extra turn we need to set up the combo. But uh, yeah, the red deck had a pretty good draw, so I don't think it would have mattered too much. But yeah, that's what you sign up for when playing this deck. You don't really have any meaningful interaction early on, so a deck that's just designed to go fast can often get there. And Amber Cleave, a nice finishing touch. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. What do we think of our opener? Yeah, I mean, we have Reenacts and we have some discard outlets, just missing a finisher. Sewers can help us hit our land drops, hopefully. So I'll try it. Ooh, Leyline of the Guild Pact. I'm intrigued. And we'll keep the land. Could be a green devotion strategy. Yep. Just trying to increase their devotion. If they find a Nykthos alongside it. For now, play Collector's Vault. Next turn we could both activate and maybe Thoughtseize. And they actually have Nykthos, wow. So thanks to the Elf and the Leyline, they can already cast a turn to Vorinclex. And their devotion's only getting higher. So, yeah, I mean, this is bad, but uh, let's see if we can slow them down. Omniscience was a good draw. So next turn we should be able to put an Omniscience in play and then Besiege to get whatever we want. So I should be fine to Thought Seize. And take Storm the Festival, although I'm sure they can still flash it back. Pass a turn. So yeah, the Mono Green deck adapting to the ban of Karn. Trying to speed things up with Leyline. And the stars kind of aligned for them here. Leyline, turn 1 Elf, turn 2 Nykthos. And they're gonna transform Vorinclex. So they get to find some creatures. Hydra and Troll. Okay. So don't need Kaito. Okay, perfect. We did actually need to draw land for this to work. I reenact omniscience. And then cast Ulamog, which can get rid of Nykthos. As well as probably the Grand Evolution. Although, let's see, can we decline to distribute any counters if we get Emrakul? Maybe that can work. Sure, we'll figure it out. And then get rid of Nykthos, get rid of maybe Old Growth Troll. And then Besiege without Bargain. And get Emrakul. Alright, so we can submit zero here if we want, although we could still grow a creature and send it into Emrakul. But uh, yeah, let's submit zero. And then we can send the two elves into our Eldrazi. And then call it a day, basically. Don't think I need to do anything else. Next turn this will transform, but I don't think that does too much for them. Okay, your turn. Still have our Collector's Vault with Omniscience, so we can keep digging towards more action. I think we could have played Shipwreck Marsh over Underground River last turn, but with Omniscience in play I don't think it matters. Our opponent seems to have disconnected. Vorinclax fails to find, so we get to take our turn. Yeah, Emrakul seems to be messing with a lot of people's internet. Thought sees. I guess we could still cast here, sure. 
Take the troll. And we'll start attacking. Could play the extra save, just attack with Emrakul, keep Ulamog back. Since they can just jump with the Hydra. Although with 36 cards remaining, Ulamog's also lethal into attacks. So I could just keep Emrakul back instead. Although if her opponent's truly disconnected, attacking with both probably would have done it too. Alright. Pass it back. And I guess wait for the timer to run out once again. So yeah, I guess we can do our outro while we wait here. But yeah, this reenact the crime combo deck, certainly impressed. Seems relatively consistent at uh, reenacting the crime at least. Having Besiege as both a backup reenact as well as a way to then get more of your win conditions once you get an Omniscience on the battlefield is pretty sweet. But as we highlighted in some of the previous games, the deck does lack early interaction. So any of the faster decks like Boros Heroic, Convoke, Monorad Aggro, there's a few of those in the format, can certainly take us out before we manage to set up our combo especially for on the draw, and as of course almost every deck in the format heavily benefits from being on the play, so if you're trying to take this into best of three, you'll have to potentially deal with more hate cards after sideboard. Graveyard hate of course can try to stop the combo, at least some specific graveyard hate that can constantly keep the graveyards clear. A card like Graveyard Trespasser out of Rakdos midrange is probably not going to do it, since we can just discard or finisher the turn we plan to combo, and uh, then you can also maybe expect more discard spells and counter spells to try and slow you down. So things will get a little bit more difficult after sideboard, so probably a deck better suited for the best of one meta where people don't expect you to uh, combo off on turn four but at the same time the best of one meta is also filled with more of these aggressive streamlined decks that can kill you before you manage to set up the combo anyways so possible that you're still actually better off in best of three Either way, the deck was a lot of fun to play, good to cast Emrakul more times than I ever recall casting it before, and even though a lot of opponents seemed to disconnect afterwards, we still had a blast. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!